Welcome to WSD Voice, a podcast focused on positive and informative news in Waterford School District. I am your host, Sarah Davis, the Director of Communications and Community Relations, and I am here with Waterford School District Superintendent Scott Lindbergh. This is going to be our last podcast episode for the 2021-2022 school year. And so we're going to focus on some of the amazing accomplishments both staff and students have achieved the past several months. But before we bring our guests on, Scott, what what are some of your thoughts about this past school year? You want to give us a synopsis of how you think things have gone? Sure. How long do I have? An hour? <laughs> no, it's uh, it's been a great year. But just to top it off, we, uh, we launched our five-year uh, district uh, strategic plan, so we're excited about that. We've made over, well over $2 million of investment in new uh, teaching curriculum, and uh, we have uh, just recently um, had a groundbreaking for our new Early Childhood Center, our first new building in over 50 years, and uh, so that's certainly a historical opportunity for us. We expect to open in uh, the fall of 24. So, Sarah, as you can see, we are really uh, laying a strong foundation for the future for Waterford schools and all of our students and families. Yep, a lot of positive news. So like I mentioned before, today we're going to talk about this year's successes. First, we're going to meet our 2022 Teacher of the Year, Mrs. Sue Case, as well as Rick West, the dad of the family who nominated Sue for the award, and Samantha Lamb, the principal at the school that Sue teaches at, Grayson Elementary. Yes, and then we will meet three of our own students, one from each high school, to talk about their time at Waterford as well as their plans for their future. Okay, let's first start with our 2022 Waterford Foundation Teacher of the Year winner, Sue Case. Hi, Sue. Welcome to the program. There's just one thing I know, and that is we are only on our third episode uh, of the podcast this season, and you've already been on here twice. So you must be a pretty special person to, to have done that already. Hi, Sarah, Scott. Thank you so much for having me on the show again. Uh, it's wonderful to be here. Maybe this is my next career <laughs> if I retire in 30 years or so. <laughs> so thank you for having me again. Yeah, absolutely. And along with Sue, we have Grayson Elementary uh, Principal Samantha Lamb and Rick from the West family. So welcome to both of you. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, the Teacher of the Year presentation is a surprise to the winner. And this was my first time experiencing it as well, and it it really was an awesome event. On April 14th, the Waterford Foundation met and announced the winner, then headed over to Grayson, along with our communications team, Samantha and Scott, to go to Sue's classroom and surprise her. And uh, I would say she was surprised. So Sue, congratulations for winning the award. Talk to us about how you felt when you learned that you had won Teacher of the Year. It was such a shock. I was ready that morning to congratulate someone else. I found out my husband is a very good actor. He asked me the night before, we were playing pickleball, which is fun, check it out. And we were just in between games. And so he said to me, was I supposed to get a call if you won? And I was like, yes, you were supposed to get a call, but you're not supposed to tell me. So then I'm gonna go check my phone. And he went to go check his phone and came back and he said, no, no call. There's always, you know, the next year and, you know, you were in with so many great people, so you should feel good about it. And and so I did. So I was ready to congratulate someone else. I just, you know, dressed in very casual clothes, just comfortable clothes. And I even saw when I was teaching my um, two grandbabies walked by. They're in fourth and fifth grade, ones that live um, nearby, actually fifth and sixth now. And I didn't even think that they were them. I wasn't expecting anyone to come. And then when everyone walked in the door, I was like, oh, you were walking by a second ago and it didn't even register. So my husband is just a great actor and it was amazing to see everyone walk in the camera crew and like 26 more people coming in and friends and family and my daughter and her, my future son-in-law and friends. So it was quite a shock. Yeah, there were a lot of people there, and kudos to your husband for keeping that a secret so well like that. Sam, what did you think when the foundation told you that Sue was the winner and that the winner was a teacher from your building? Well, I remember coming to work that day, and there was a a message for me from Sue Austin. 
And I was really nervous. It was almost like it was my award. Like, you know, that's how nervous I was. And I, I took a few minutes and I thought about it and I was like, it's gotta be her. It's gotta be her. Um, so I called and the first thing she said was, Sam, congrats, Sue's the winner. And I just, I lost it. And I, I quickly went up and shut my door so no one could hear me um, and was just, just over the moon excited because um, although we had just a phenomenal pool this year, um, I just, you know, Sue is the one, she's just amazing. So it was an awesome phone call, but then afterward, I couldn't tell anybody. Mm. You know, not even could I not tell Sue, I didn't want to tell anybody else because, you know, out of fear of them slipping and saying something. And so many things I kind of had to do cryptically. Like I, I had a, um, a meeting on my calendar the day that um, the foundation was coming. So I had to cancel that. And the person asked me why. And I said, well, I have something going on. I'm sorry. Um, I had to arrange a sub for the classroom. Well, I couldn't tell the sub where she was going if she'd have lesson plans. I said, don't worry, just trust me. Um, you know, and just little things like I brought Sue and flowers that day. Well, if I would have carried the flowers in the building, she would have known. So I put them in a huge trash bag. Um, I didn't want to dress too fancy, didn't want to dress too casual. So um, there was a, a lot going on behind the scenes to keep keep it a secret and surprise Sue. But I'm really excited that we were able to do that. Yeah. And it sounds like you thought of every detail too, hiding the flowers in the trash bag. That's a pretty good uh, trick there. <laughs> um, Rick, why did you nominate Sue for Teacher of the Year? Well, thanks for having me on. Yeah, my wife and I uh, received the myriad of emails uh, from the district regarding the uh, nomination process, and it took us about you know three seconds to say we have to do this. Um, we have to we have to nominate uh, Mrs. Case. We have been blessed to experience her now for this is our third year um, in her classroom. Our, our oldest son, who's in fifth grade, Grant had her for the two, three multi-age and uh, got to experience her for two years. And then Seth, uh, our, our middle son, is experiencing her, her teaching this year. And we have just been so impressed uh, from, from day one when we met her uh, with, with Grant and, and it carried over to this year. Um, the thing that hit us probably the most uh, was this year and, and when the meet and greet uh, she went up to Seth and she just simply said the, the simple words of, uh, hi, Seth, I'm so happy to meet you. I'm so happy you're here, something to that effect. And instantly knowing knowing kids and especially knowing my kids, how much that has impacted Seth and how much it has affected his whole entire year. He, he knew that he was safe in her class. He knew that uh, he had somebody who cared. Uh, so when when we actually read the application packet and it's, you know, the, the vision of Waterford of inspire, educate and empower, I mean, she exemplifies it in every single way uh, through the way that she instructs the structure of her classroom. Uh, you know, it's kind of a governance structure that she has set up the problem based learning projects that we may have an opportunity to discuss uh, and the connections that she makes with families and, and with students is just phenomenal and we couldn't think of anybody more deserving and and may i say the whole grace and staff is just absolutely fantastic but uh, uh mrs case certainly stands out to us and and we are just so honored to experience her and i think one of the best compliments you can give a teacher is you know we want to experience that again and uh we have we fortunately have a third child uh, that's in, in second grade and if we're blessed enough maybe we go three for three <laughs> Right, and uh, speaking of that, that problem-based learning you touched on, Sue has implemented, um, implemented that in her classroom this year, and that's actually why she was on the podcast before to talk about that. Um, how has your son engaged with our project-based learning here at Waterford? So he's been engaged in this really cool project of designing the actual playground that it sounds like we were informed last year that's maybe going to come to fruition at Grayson. Uh, and Mrs. Case's class has had the opportunity to design it from ground up, really. And Seth has just, what a powerful project where he gets to engage. He, I think he got to engage from the design uh, standpoint, from the finance standpoint, the budget, uh, and then to see that work come to life. Additionally, I mentioned the governance structure that she had. Um, you know, everybody in the class has a role. They know they belong. They know they have a role in the classroom and uh, Seth 
uh, Grant, I forget what his his uh, role was. I think it was line leader or something like that. Seth was elected uh, lieutenant governor this year, so it comes with a myriad of responsibilities um, throughout the week. And it's just so powerful because, as I mentioned, the connection that they make, uh, the feeling that they're involved, the um, applicability of the learning. Uh, I just I just saw one of Seth's spreadsheets the other day, and it was. It was created, or uh, worksheets rather, it was created and, and it was using relevant, I think you use Skittles or something, you know, and, and problem solving um, a math problem using, I think your own name and some relevant facts within the classroom. So created out of scratch. And it just, I think it really has helped, especially knowing my son has just helped him connect on a daily basis to, to the learning process. That's awesome, uh, Rick. We enjoy hearing that feedback, too, about those those new initiatives when they're implemented. Um, Sam, what is it that makes you such a great teacher? This is a very easy question to answer, but also a very hard one because there's so there's just so much and it's, it's hard to even put into words um, when you come across a teacher like Sue, exactly what they mean, not only to the students, but but to the community. Um, you know, something that strikes me about Sue is she always wants to be better. And sometimes I'm like, I don't know how you can be any better. Like, she's just the best. And it's funny, I, you know, as a principal, I'm tasked with evaluating teachers and I put this in her evaluation every year. Your evaluation is easy for me to do, but so hard because I have a hard time giving her feedback because she's so incredible. She wants to always be on the cutting edge of what's new what are best practices she's on every facebook group there is known to, to man for third grade for envision for hmh she will come in my office and go you know what i woke up at 2 a.m last night and i was thinking about so and so and this is what i did i'm, I'm like okay sue um, I, I want you to get some sleep but that's awesome that's just who she is she's always striving to be better She's um, always preaching to her kids that we can always do better. We can always learn more. Um, she, the, the love and admiration that she has for her students, you just can't beat it. I think Mr. West mentioned how, you know, on day one, she has, um, she said to Seth, you know, welcome and you, you have a place here. I'm happy you're here. She's always using language like that. Um, how much she cares for you. Or, you know, I want you to hold that thought because your thought is important to me and I'm really busy right now, but I'm going to get back to it. Um, just the way she communicates with with children is just um, it's it's absolutely incredible. She is also um, just a, an incredible resource for her colleagues, always willing to share her resources and help out somebody else. So I just again, I, I can't say enough about who she is as a learner, as a teacher, a mother figure in the classroom. Um, she she's a lot of things to a lot of us and Grayson would not be the same place without her. So she's never retiring. <laughs> Ever. Not allowing it. <laughs> Thank you for that, Sam. Sue, let's hear from you. What is it that you love about teaching? Everything. <laughs> I just love coming in and hearing their stories and, and the way they phrase things. And I love watching them struggle too. Like, you know, they're like they stick out their tongues or just kind of, you know, look up in the sky for a minute and, you know, have to struggle through something. And then just to watch just kind of like their eyes get wide and open and smile, like, I got it now, you know, and to see her like, I didn't know this before, but I know it now. And um, one of my boys said, reading is hard for me. It's really hard for me. I'm sorry, he always makes me cry, <laughs> but he's like, reading is hard, but I'm going to come back and tell you when I have my good job, I did it. Mm -hmm. you know and so I just I love that yeah that's very heartwarming uh, now an exciting part about winning is that you get to pick out a lease from Suburban Ford of Waterford so big shout out to Suburban for helping us show appreciation to our winner so Sue what car did you pick out yeah it was hard um, I ended up getting an Explorer because I do like to ride bicycles and I like to baby my bike I don't want it on the back getting wet or dirty. So um, I got the Explorer because it will fit in the back. Um, and also the interesting thing is the night that I picked it up, which was the Saturday after, um, I broke my toe in the middle of the night. I went to get like a drink of water and um, 
I broke my toe. Well, the Explorer has an auto hold. So you don't have to keep your broken toe holding down the brake. You can actually just hit the brake and take your foot off and it has an auto hold. So that worked out very timely for me. It is a great car. My grandpa worked for a GM and this is the first Ford that I've ever had. And I'll tell you, I love it. And their dealership makes you feel like home. Like everyone there and every every employee that we met with was wonderful. And I, I would say go there, go see them. Yeah, good endorsement and, and it works with your broken toe. So I'm glad that all of that is working out as well. Um, so I hope you enjoy that car. You've, you've certainly earned it. Uh, thank you to all of you for being on the show, and congrats again to Sue. Um, I do want to mention that there are nine total nominations for Teacher of the Year and that the focus this year was on elementary-level teachers. So I'm going to read the names of the other nominees just so we have them out there as well. Um, Stacy Isbell, fourth-grade teacher from Cooley. Ann Wilson, fifth-grade teacher from Schoolcraft. Elizabeth Robertson, fourth grade teacher from Schoolcraft. Corey Holohan, music teacher at Schoolcraft. Megan McGrath, second grade teacher from Beaumont. Jennifer Jenzerik, fourth grade teacher from Donaldson Hills. Angela Reddick, second grade teacher from Knutson. And Rachel Bryce, kindergarten teacher from Schoolcraft. Congrats again to all of our nominees. And Scott, what do you have to say about Sue and this group of educators? Well, one of the things that Sue said uh, about a student coming back someday to tell him about his job and how he's reading made me think about how important teachers are in our lives. And just a couple years ago, when I became superintendent, I reached out and was able to connect with my first grade teacher and uh, took her to lunch. Uh, my mom joined us and my youngest uh, daughter at the time, uh, I think she was 10, and uh, it was such a, a wonderful opportunity. I am here because of teachers like Sue and like so many of our nominees. So uh, thank you again for, for uh, working with our kids like you do, Sue. You know, Sarah, these exceptional nine teachers that you mentioned are just simply examples of the quality Waterford School District professionals we have leading our students every day in every school and in every classroom. They inspire hope, ignite imaginations, and instill the love of learning in their students. These teachers awaken the joy of learning by emphasizing with their students, respecting them, and believing that each one, each one has potential to reach their personal best. And I know Sue is a great example on that. On behalf of our grateful community, I want to thank Sue, Stacy, Ann, Elizabeth, Corey, Megan, Jennifer, Angela, and Rachel, all of our nominees for their continued commitment toward empowering students to thrive. All right, thank you, Scott, well said, and thank you again to all of our guests. Everyone stay tuned. Up next, we're gonna talk to three of our uh, Waterford School District students about their time at WSD, as well as their plans for the future. Hello, Scott Lindbergh here, Superintendent of Waterford School District. It's time to start thinking about where your child should attend school for the 2022 and 2023 school year. At Waterford School District, we aim to create today's student to become tomorrow's leader. And we are uniquely prepared to build your child's future. We offer many dynamic learning opportunities such as an innovative STEM Academy, and we recently invested $2 million in cutting edge curriculum. Enroll at wsdmi.org slash enrollment. That's wsdmi.org slash enrollment. Come join us here at Waterford School District, where your child will be inspired, educated, and empowered to thrive. All right, so great to hear from Sue and everyone else involved in Teacher of the Year. It's a really great program through our Waterford Foundation, who we hope to have represented on an upcoming episode of WSD Voice. But now we're going to talk to some of our students. That's right, and keeping in line with the theme of this episode, we're going to talk to three of our Waterford School District students about their time at WSD as well as their plans for the future. So I have the privilege and uh, I'm just excited to welcome to the show Abby Stauber, our uh, Mott representative, Alexander Salazar from Durant High School, and Noah Kanuja representing Kettering High School today. Excellent. Thank you for all of you for being here today. Let's start with Noah. Noah, your mom actually works for the district, correct? 
Um, so yeah, she mainly teaches seventh and eighth graders over at Pierce, and I've actually been a student here at uh, Waterford School District all my life. Um, I've been I've been in Waterford School since preschool, starting at Stepanski, and then I moved over to Haviland for elementary school, and then I went to Pierce with my mom, and now I'm here at Kettering, where I've been at for the last four years. So it's been pretty fun. All right, awesome. That's great that you're a lifelong WSD student. Um, I was looking through a list of who our scholarship recipients are and saw that you've been awarded a scholarship. Can you tell us a little bit about that and where you plan to attend school in the fall? Yeah, so um, I got the presidential scholarship over at Alma, which covers about maybe 90% of my tuition there. Um, and I'm going to be going there to play football and major in sports management and probably minor in either communications or business. Okay, awesome. Um, I'm told that you're the first Kettering student to go to Alma. What do you plan to do while you're there? So what I really plan to do is, like I said, I'm just going to major in sports management and hopefully try to keep my grades up and I'll play football in my uh, off time and hopefully we can get some wins over there too. Yeah, absolutely. That's very exciting, Noah. And I'm going to ask this of all the uh, guests here on the podcast. What are some things that you learned during your time as a student at Waterford? Um, definitely some things that I've learned and cherished is like how to make how to make lasting friendships. Um, over four years, the friends that I've had is have like increased and especially if I still have friends from my elementary school. So it's really cool that like being able to move up with all my friends into the same district and keep in touch is something that I definitely like. Yeah, for sure, especially being a lifelong student of, of the district. Um, yeah. So now we will move on to Alexander. Alexander, you're currently a Durant student. What are your plans for the future? Well, when I plan on after I plan on graduating, I plan to um, like keep going with my music career, keep playing with my band. Um, I do want to go to Texas. I plan on moving to Texas to do my music out there. Not this year, but hopefully in the next couple of years. And um, yeah, I think I'm just gonna stick with the music for a while. Do a lot of music stuff, get, get out, try to put my name out there a lot. Can you talk a little bit more about the music stuff? What, what band are you in? And I oh, think yeah. you had mentioned earlier um, that your dad's in the band and, and all of that. But. Yeah, well, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a family band. It's my dad, my grandpa, and my uncle. And the guitar player, he's our friend, but we all just play together. And the name is Grupo Illusion. It's spelled illusion, but it's, they say illusion. But yeah, it's pretty fun. They, I think it's been a band for like 25 years now. And I, I joined like three years ago. So I've been playing. I'm finally playing full time with them now, like the whole night, because I started off playing at least like three songs for one night. And they didn't give me, I didn't get paid or nothing. So now I actually get paid for playing too. So. Yeah. That's exciting. What first got you into music? Um, I just, I grew up with the band in my family, my aunts, my uncles, everybody, just, just my whole family is musically inclined. So I, they just, I, they wouldn't, they didn't force it on me, but I kind of like, they like bought me the instruments and I, I learned it. So yeah, very cool. It's been pretty cool though. All right. And then you were uh, telling me about a day job. You were thinking about going into the mortgage business as well once you graduate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my aunt, she works at United Hotel Mortgage, and she told me about a year ago that she could get me in there, and I, I've been sticking with it, so I'm probably just going to go there. It, it seems like a good job. She's If my aunt can stay there, I think I could stay there too. So it's pretty cool. It, it seems like a cool job. Yeah, well, good luck to you for that. Thank you, thank um, you. And just like I asked Noah, what are some things that you learned during your time as a student at Waterford? Well, I did get a lot of new friends when I came into Waterford School. I came in fifth grade at Grayson, and then I went to Mason and Kettering, and then now Durant. But within all those years, I've got so many friends, and I still have all those friends still. It, Waterford School District is pretty cool. I like it. It's it's a good district. Durant, too. Durant's a real good school. I, they helped me out with a lot of my work here. It's real nice here. Good. I'm glad to hear that you've had a great experience in the school district and Durant specifically. Oh, yeah. Um, so thank you, Alexander, for You're being welcome. on the show. 
Uh, last but not least, we have Abigail representing Mott. Um, well, sorry, Abby. Can you give us a quick rundown of some of what you were involved in during your time at Mott? Um, some of the clubs I've been in at Mott are ADL, which is the Anti-Defamation League. It's just a club that brings insight on problems in the school and bringing things up to date with current issues and just how us as a student body can help our peers and people around us. Um, I have also been in the band at here at my, I was a percussionist. I didn't get to do it this year, sadly, because of how scheduling worked out. But for the last three years, I was a percussionist. Um, and I've also been in Link Crew, which is a freshman, senior, well, freshman and upperclassman pairing that introduces the freshman into high school and what it's going to be like for the next four years, basically. Mm, very nice. Uh, and on top of that, I hear you are a tremendous athlete. You even broke a record previously held since 2011. Can you tell us a little bit about your athletic career at Waterford? Um, the record that I broke is the pole vault record. It was nine feet, eight inches. And at the meet that I broke it at, I just wanted to make sure that I could do it. So I jumped nine, nine, just uh, one up it a bit, but then ended up jumping 10, six. So almost a foot over it. Wow. And how did you get into pole vaulting? Like, like to me, that's kind of a unique sport, kind of a niche to get into. Um, I was a gymnast most of my life growing up. So one of my gymnastics friends who had already been at Mott on the track team as a high jumper wanted to try pole vaulting. And she told me she didn't want to go alone and that I didn't have to keep doing it, but to just be there for the first practice. So I said, why not? And I ended up really liking it and continued to do it. Very cool. And on top of setting athletic records, you have also been offered multiple scholarships. From what I counted, you received um, offers from seven different universities, totaling over $320,000. Can you tell us about some of those offers and where you ultimately decided you will go and why? Um, I got most presidential scholarships from the colleges that I applied to and just regular like grants and stuff that I applied for, but I ultimately decided to go to Siena Heights University for pole vaults and to study environmental science. And I shouldn't be too much in debt afterwards because of the scholarship, <laughs> so that's nice. <laughs> yeah, absolutely something to consider when you're looking at all of that. Um, that's a great story, Abby. And like our two other guests, what are some things that you learned during your time as a student at, at Waterford? Um, probably I'd like to cherish all the people and the staff members and teachers that I've met along the way. Going to Pierce for middle school, most kids go to Kettering instead of Mott, so you kind of lose most of your friends and it's kind of hard. So being able to make new friends freshman year with people that already knew each other could be kind of difficult. So it's nice to know that there are a lot of nice people that were ready to welcome me and be here for people who might not know as many people. Yeah, good. I'm glad that was your experience. Such um, amazing stories and plans for our students, Scott. As superintendent, you must feel proud of these young adults. Yeah, these are examples of well-rounded experiences that have, have brought these three students here today. Different pathways lead to different opportunities, and it's so good to hear each one of these students, the three that we've talked with today, have strong post-high school plans and visions for, for their life. It reminds me of, of what we're all about here in Waterford, and that's inspired, educated, and empowered uh, to thrive. And, and here's an example of of uh, athletics here and uh, the arts and certainly the academics that have gotten them to this point today. So we're proud of all three of you and we uh, certainly thank you for joining us and representing Waterford as you go out beyond uh, the Waterford boundaries to show the world what you're all about. Yep, thanks for being on the show, Abby, Noah, and uh, Alexander. And um, to Scott and the rest of our guests earlier in the show, thank you. Thank you also for being on. Good luck to everyone. You all have very bright futures ahead.
This podcast was brought to you by Waterford School District's Department of School and Community Services and is produced by Video Production Coordinator Jane Tickelly. I am the host of this podcast, Sarah Davis, and you can find all episodes of WSD Voice on our website at waterford.k12.mi.us, or you can tune in to 89.5 WAHS or Radio Central Multicultural. We so appreciate you listening today and encourage you to continue to tune in to future episodes of WSD Voice as we discuss topics geared toward inspiring, educating, and empowering our students, staff, and alumni to thrive.